name is Edson Oliveira and I'll be presenting this video for TNNHere.com on how to use the newsletter feature of .NET Nook. So here's my test website. I'm going to log in as host. My host user is called Ederson. So there are a couple of things that we need to check before we try to use the newsletter feature. First thing is, let's go to host, host settings. And you have to make sure that under advanced settings, SMTP, server settings, that these settings are properly set. Um, so again, this will depend on the settings for your email uh, hosting company. You have to put the SMTP server, username if it's required, password if it's required. So those are my settings. So you have to do your own settings. Some hosting companies. You can just basically use anonymous on your settings and leave it empty. But again, this will depend on your own uh, particular case. But you have to make sure that those sets are properly uh, placed. And to test that, you can come to the host email, put your own email here, and click test to see if you're going to get this message, email sent successfully. If you get that, then your SMTP settings are properly placed. So that's the first thing that you have to be careful. Now, just to let you know, this is a DNN installation 521. The latest DNN install, which is at this point in time, April 16, 2010, the, the latest DNN version is 531. So uh, this, there seems to be a bug in the DNN version 531 with regards to the newsletter feature. But just a side note. Uh, now, once we check the SMTP settings, if everything is okay, we should go to admin newsletters. So here's where I'm going to say which users, which roles will receive the email newsletter that I'm going to send. So here in the selected roles, you can select administrators, registered users, subscribers. In my case, I'm going to select uh, subscribers. Let's have a look who are the subscribers of my website. Let's go under admin and security roles. I will just click under subscribers to see who are my subscribers here in the test site. So I have someone called John, which unfortunately I cannot see his email from here, but I have John and Ederson. So let's go to admin user accounts. So Ederson account, this is the email address and John, this is the second email address. So both are my own email address accounts different ones but both mine. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sending a newsletter to the subscriber group which in my case here for the demo site there are two users registered to this group. So this is checked. Now I can add more email addresses if I want and I can keep adding them here and uh, just for the sake of uh, test I'm going to add another email address that I have as well and if I want to add more and more I can just use a semicolon and I keep adding now, the from email is the email address that I'll be sending this message from. Reply to, I'll also put the same email address in case someone replies to my newsletter. So I will get the message. This is a subject line, email newsletter. And here's the actual body of, of my message. This is the FCK editor. So let's say that I'm, I'm going to say hi. This is a test newsletter. Thanks. So here's a, again, just a test newsletter. Uh, my intention is not to, to make this video uh, how to do a, uh, a nice newsletter, just to show how to send a newsletter. So if we scroll down, there are a couple of uh, interesting options here under advanced settings. First one is that you can uh, add attachments to your newsletter. The second one, which is the one that I want to focus right now, is replace tokens. And it's checked. What is replace tokens? Replace tokens is in the case that you want to personalize your newsletter. Let's say I want to say, hi, John. But of course, I cannot type in John because otherwise everybody will receive a hi, John at the top of his newsletter. We want this to be replaced automatically with tokens. So here's a, a user first name token. Bracket. So put, just put user, column, and then let's say first name, I will post a list of those different tokens in the video uh, page on my website. 
So this is the first name. I can also put the, the last name as well. User column last name. Okay, so this is the way we will uh, use the replace tokens. If this option is checked, what will happen is that whenever it the code sees uh, this token, it will replace by the username of the user within this group, subscribers. The same thing as last name. And there are a couple of more uh, tokens that can be used here, but let's focus on those two ones. Now, of course, if you put additional emails, we don't have the first name, we don't have the last name for this user. So in those cases, those tokens will be replaced by blank text. So for support at wayoutcorp.com, the email, the email that will be received will, be, will say, hi, blank text, this is a test newsletter, thanks. Because again, this is not the user in the website. So this is about replacement token priority, just say the priority of the email, nothing, not, not much here. Now, send method. This is important because you can only use replace tokens if you keep one message per email address personalized or the last one which is also personalized. But if you do as a, as a BCC, as a not personalized type of uh, newsletter, you will not be able to use replacement tokens. So my suggestion is keep the first one selected and the last option is send action. Keep it, well, I, I usually keep it as a synchronous just so I don't have to be waiting here uh, for the site to respond and those those uh, when I hit send and so I synchronously uh, what will happen is that uh, the site will, will uh, I, I will regain control of the site when I click send and an email will be sent to me saying how many uh, successful emails were sent out so now I'm gonna hit send email and see what will happen okay so basically uh, in a, in a synchronous way, the, the book email was sent. Now let me check my email inbox. So here's what I got in my inbox. The first message says, what I, what I realize is that whenever I'm sending a newsletter, it also sends an SCP configuration uh, test. So that's the first email that I got. So this is just a test email. Now this the, the second email is actually the confirmation. And and here we, we see some interesting information. This is for the the user Ederson under subscriber. This is for the user John under subscribers group. And this is the additional email that I have added under the additional emails field. Okay, so this information is sent to the to the email address set in the host settings of my website. So that confirmation is sent to this email address under host email. Now let's see the actual email that got sent out. So here's the first email, which is going to support, which is the, the add-on email that I have added under additional emails. So there is high and blank because this is not a user. So the tokens were just uh, deleted. Now. The, the actual two emails that were sent out with uh, replaced tokens are just right here. The first one says, hi John Smith, first name, last name, token replaced. The second email says, hi Ederson, Oliveira. So again, we sent out two personalized emails because they were subscribers and we sent out also one generic email to uh, the additional email that was placed under additional emails. So basically this is it. This is how uh, you can use the newsletter module to send out newsletter. Of course, this is a basic module. This is You won't be able to do very, very fancy stuff with this module. It's just sending out information. That's basically it. You don't have any any other fancy controls. Now, there are plenty of fancy modules on snowcover.com uh, that can that you can have a, a much more granular control over your newsletter, you can you can record newsletter, you can track who saw, who opened the, the mail, you can do a bunch of other things. But this is basically the basic functionality of the newsletter module that comes with .NET Look. Okay, thank you very much.